What up, B-Squad? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with the review for Love After Lockup, you guys, season four, episode number 38, you guys. This episode was titled Ticking Time Bombs. Oof. Before we go ahead and get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other on the channel, and you guys aren't yet subscribed to the channel, do me a solid favor and please stop taking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it. Do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, turning your post notifications on, sharing the video. And with that out of the way, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this episode, shall we? All right, you guys, so let's start with the couple that we don't care about it. Nathan and Skyler. So, WeTV, you guys, WeTV put out a little post yesterday to say, oh, you know, we are so sorry for the offensive word that came out of a certain cast member. They never said his name. They never mentioned. They just said that they apologized for it. That was two weeks ago, WeTV, but there you go. So, the producers showed up to Nathan's house looking for he and Skyler. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. So with Nathan and Skyler scenes, I wasn't really too much listening to it. They weren't there. You know, his friend showed up because they were supposed to film with him and his friend. So her, Skyler's mom showed up and she was worried that Skyler might have, you know, reverted back to, you know, doing drugs. But eventually Skyler did show up. Nathan came to the house. I believe that was Nathan. Nathan came to the house, let her out. And the producers got in the car with him. Him and the producers went for a little bit of a ride. And he told the producers they got to get out of his car. And then the next scene we see is Skylar talking to her mother. I couldn't care less, you guys. The same way I felt about Gabby and Chris is the same way I feel about Nathan and Skylar. These two are both toxic people. And I don't want to see them on my television screen. I don't enjoy them whatsoever. After he, used, after he said nigga, I really don't see it for him. But yeah. If I missed anything and you guys care to discuss it down in the comment section about Nathan and Skyler, we definitely can do it. But other than that, that's all I got. Don't really care. Let's pause here and move forward. You guys, let's talk about Justine and Michael real quick. So Justine is officially pregnant. We found out in this episode. So she wants to tell her mother. Now, she doesn't want to tell her kids. She just wants to tell her mother. And Michael feels that they should wait. And honestly, I agree with Michael about waiting because you want to at least get through your first trimester before you start telling people that you're pregnant, right? So I understand that. But I think Michael has different reasons for not wanting to tell her mother because Michael says her mother doesn't like him. And he's going to be in Justine's life whether she likes it or not. I was like, well, shoot, if you're having a baby, you're definitely going to be in Justine's life whether she likes it or not, right? Now, I forgot to mention this last week in the review. So Michael wants for Justine to quit her job. And for me, that makes no logical sense. When y'all have a baby on the way and she has a, a nine to five, I'm pretty sure she has, you know, medical benefits, you know, health benefits, all of that kind of stuff. Why would she up and quit her job when you just got out of prison? Now, unless Michael has some of that drug money still stashed somewhere. That music career, Michael, no shade to you, buddy. That music career, do you know how many people want to be musicians? I know, you, I know you're probably banking off the success of this show, but I wouldn't. And then listening to Michael rap, no shade to Michael. You guys know I like Michael, but it's a no. The rapping, it's a no. It's a no. Because he's somebody he's waiting for this one super mega hit so that they, you do know that there are a lot of one hit wonders, Sir Mix a lot. There are a lot of one hit wonders who got a hit record, got a lot of money, but once that one hit wonder is gone, what are you going to do? You're not going to live up, like, What is that one hit wonder gonna do for you, Michael? You can't live off of that forever. There are certain people who have been able to live off, live off of a hit, a one hit, but that's because it was such a good hit that you know advertisers bought it and stuff. But I don't know, too, I don't know too many people who, honestly, I don't know too many people who have lived off of a one, off of one hit. 
and I don't think it's very many because although I don't think Michael has a although Michael doesn't have a label you don't get that much money like artists don't make a lot of money from the the revenue the, you know the music sales like I've said plenty of times artists make money when they go on tour but he's gonna do he 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 went to a studio Mm, Michael, I would, I would, I would, I would really implore you to get a job, buddy. Sorry, the rapping, it wasn't there, my friend. Then Justine went and quit her job. I was like, oh my God, this is not smart. Why would you quit your job? You're pregnant. Like you're gonna have to go to the doctor. Okay. You know what? Her boss is even trying to tell her, like, are you doing this for you or for your husband? Sounds like she's doing it for her husband. Now, I get taking maternity leave, and I think maternity leave should be longer than what it is, but you're quitting a steady, stable source of income. And mind you, I said steady, steady. Michael's music career is not going to be steady. The music industry can be quite volatile. Never mind. They're going to do whatever they feel suits them. It makes no sense to me. But hey, let's pause here and move forward. All right, you guys. So next up, let's talk about Ashley and Travis. So with Ashley and Travis, I think Travis got conned. You know, I had been making a joke that he was going to rob Ashley blind, but I believe Ashley was the catfish. Like... The, the math with Ashley ain't mathing. Like, and especially when she showed that when she, so I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, right? So they're going to his mom's house, right? So Ashley's talking about she's been struggling for years, but she spent money on him. I'm like, how, are, how have you been struggling? First of all, that's stupid to number one. I'm struggling to make ends meet, but I'm going to sit here and take care of a man that's in prison. I'd be damned. I'd be hot damn, but like I said, the math ain't, it ain't adding up with Ashley. Ashley must have already been in debt for years, right? I know that Ashley says that the pandemic took a toll on her, and I get that, right? The pandemic took a toll on all of us. It took a toll on everybody. But here's my thing, Ashley. How are you used to living in that house? I don't know when we TV filmed this, if it was 2021 or 22, but either way it goes. How are you still staying in that house if you weren't making that much money? Because you're in Florida, so I would assume that that rent was expensive. Even though we, I thought you were, I thought that was your home, but that ain't got nothing to do with nothing either, right? So they went to go get his mom a gift. Now, I was with Ashley when that man told him that the candles were $85, $86, $87. I was like, for a candle? A candle? Y'all better go to Bed Bath & Beyond, Walmart, somewhere, anywhere cheap, and get his mama a damn candle. $87 my behind for, a, for two candles? I better be able to eat, breathe, and sleep with that candle for $87. And then she was talking about how much she sacrificed. And I'm like, girl, he, I don't, unless he asked you to sacrifice things for him... That's a you problem, not a his problem, right? Then it was really kind of sad to see them going in their car trying to scrape, scrape and scrunch of money for these expensive ass candles. I was like, why not just get one? Why not just get none? Go to Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond, go somewhere reasonable to get a candle. But like I said, with Ashley, I just, it, the math don't math with Ashley. It's something off with Ashley. I ain't been able to put my finger on it, right? So they make it to his mom's house. Ashley in this crying. It bothers me. So his mom is wondering, how y'all gonna make it with no money? And I'm thinking the same damn thing, right? So she shows them around the house and she shows them her little guest space, right? Her, her basement. She tells them that they can stay there. And both of them says, oh, no, 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 no. I was like, oh, yes, 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 yes. You just got out of prison. She ain't got no money. Y'all need somewhere to lay your heads. 
I'm pretty sure y'all spent all the little money that you had from the hotel. If y'all had this scrape of $87 for that, those candles, y'all asses is broke. So then we see Ashley and Ashley went down to a thrift store. I was like, ma'am, well, what did you expect to find in a thrift store? And I'm not shading the thrift store because I used to work at Goodwill. You can find some really nice things at the thrift store, right? But she, but the jewelry that she was looking at, it was all tangled up. I'm like, ma'am, you know good damn well that that's probably costume jewelry. No shade to costume jewelry. I was like, girl, give me a break. Then I started thinking a little bit deeper, right? Because as she showed them at her website, and some of her jewelry was thousands and th was thousands of dollars. And then it started to, it started, my brain started to think, Ashley's business is e-commerce. E-commerce kind of thrived during the pandemic. E-commerce, e-commerce is what we typically, I mean, when you think about everything that we do now, we do curbside, like people do things curbside. You order it, you go and pick it up, or you have things delivered to you. I mean, we've been doing, we've been doing, having stuff mailed to us, you know, we've been going onto these websites and having things mailed to us for years now. But with the pandemic, I know that times were tough for a lot of people, but if you have a specific client and let Ash, uh, the way that Ash has talked about her business, you would think she has a specific clientele. So you would think that she would be dealing with people who have money. So people who had money during the pandemic didn't have to really worry about a lot of stuff. It was us working class people who had a lot of stuff to worry about. And us working class, couldn't afford, from them prices that I saw, the working class people couldn't afford that even beyond, even before the pandemic. So I think Ashley is lying. Like I said, and especially with her business being online, how did your e-commerce business really struggle? That would have been prime opportunity People want you to mail stuff. To, people want to buy stuff on people where everybody was at home during the pandemic. Do you guys know how much shit I bought during the pandemic? I, when I first, when we first went on lockdown, I was buying so much stuff that I didn't even need at the time. And then I was looking around like, why did I buy this? What did I need this for? Like, there was so much stuff during the pandemic that I bought that I didn't need. I, I remember I bought, um, I bought my bar, I bought some bar stools. I bought a green screen. I bought so much stuff. Even went to the st even was buying stuff in the store. I was I was buying stuff. I was ordering clothes. You know, um, going to the you know doing curbside. So I don't buy nothing that Ashley's saying to be quite honest with you. But we go. I'm gonna keep my good eye on Ashley because I think she's I think she's the catfish. Let's pause here and move forward, you guys. You guys, uh, let's just go ahead and. Monique and Derek, you guys, I'm over this couple. I, I, I think they're good for the show, but for me to watch it, they're annoying. And it's not even Derek, it's really Monique, right? Like, it's Monique's insecurities that get to me each and every week, right? So, now, we see his brothers, they took him, they were talking about his sisters and Monique, right? Now, you guys know how I feel about the situation with the sisters and with Monique. I'm not on anybody's side. I think they were all in the wrong. The sisters were wrong for talking about Monique's weight, right? And I know that the sister that's trans, she said that, you know, Monique misgendered her. So two wrongs don't make it right. And I'm not going to defend Monique and I'm not going to defend the sister, right? So here's the question that I have. That hotel, that the hotel that Monique and Derek is staying in, that's not a hotel. That is an apartment. Because if you guys look, did you guys look at that up this episode? If you looked at the outside of the hotel, hotel that was an apartment, but then you look at the inside of it, it is designed like a hotel. I was like, what hotel looks like an apartment complex? But okay, it ain't got nothing to do with me, right? So, Derek, when he's with his brothers, he takes out his tablet that he had from prison, and it ain't got nothing, it got something. Now, I could have, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I feel like I saw a girl who was, you know, touching herself because they blurred that out. But I was like, oh, her, is that somebody's legs wide open? 
I know one girl was, you know, um, bouncing her booty. It was a lot of booty. I know, I know I saw a lot of booty. And I'm like, you still got that. I'm like, you better, you better throw that somewhere because if Monique finds that, she's going to lose her shit. Um, so the sisters came to the house and once again, I forget what, the, I forget what the sister's name is, the trans sister, I forget what her name is. Um, I still don't like her talking about Monique's weight, like, we all know that Monique is a big girl, we know Monique is a, a big, big girl. Monique knows she's big. Why do we have to keep pointing out that she's big? I don't get that. So we did see them as they went to go visit their mom's grave and I did hear about their mom's story. It was on the first 48, I don't know which season and I don't know which episode, but I did hear about their mom's, you know, being on the first 48, she was celebrating her birthday. She went out and it's just, it's so tragic. So, so tragic. So Monique was trying to figure out where Derek was. I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna let that man live his life. <sighs> so the next morning she's asking him, where was he at? What time did you get in? I would break up with Monique because that the, the, it's the insecurities for me. It really is the insecurities because she got upset that he turned off his location. Then when he was, he told her he was with his sister, she had an issue with that. I was like, Monique, you cannot be serious with me right now. Like I, I, I want to like Monique, but I, I just, I don't steal for Monique like that. But let's pause here and wrap up this episode. Eris and Cameron, you guys, oof. So Cameron is going to be going to meet his family and he wants Eris to come with him. Eris told him she wasn't feeling well, right? I was like, is it, are you hungover or is it what I think it might be that he might be pregnant as well? So he was a little bit pissed off that she ain't coming, but I mean, she just told you she wasn't feeling well, but okay. So Cameron went over to his family's house and they were like, where's wifey? We want to meet your wife. And he was like, she ain't coming. So they were like, okay, well, we gonna call her up. So they called her and she told him she wasn't feeling well. So they hung up and him and his family got into it. I will say one thing about him and his family. They all look alike. Like his one, one of his aunts came up to him, talking to him. She looks exactly like his sister, him, his sister and her look exactly alike. Right. And his family is very, you know, they have their reservations about him going down to Florida to live with Eris. And honestly, I don't blame, I don't blame his family for having, having reservations because they don't, they don't know Eris. They've never met Eris. And look, it's kind of funny. His family has reservations and he's a grown man. Eris is a grown ass woman, but has no reservations about him being around her daughter. And again, I'm not saying that he would do anything duplicitous to her daughter or, you know, you know, malicious, duplicitous, any of that stuff. I'm not saying he would do that, but the thing is you don't know him that well. And if you watch this episode, you saw him like when he was going off on his family, he was slurring his words. He could not stand up. That man had gotten pissy drunk. And that's and that was the reason he went back to jail because he went out for the night when he was in a halfway house and got drunk. And you bringing this around your daughter. You're bringing this around your child is what bothers me is the fact that you're bringing this around your child. Not the best decision, not smart at all. Like my, like, uh. and again, again, I, I don't want anybody to take it in a negative way that I'm saying that he would do anything to her daughter. That is not what I'm saying. What I am saying is I don't think it's smart, especially with his track record. He went back to jail because he failed a breathalyzer. Now he can say he had one or two drinks. I highly doubt that. Looking at this episode, Cameron doesn't look like he's the type of person that can only have one or two drinks. Like he got there, he started drinking. When they called Ayers, hand me the bottle or whatever. And he drank from the, I'm like, now that was nasty when he drank from the bottom. I'm like, sir, you don't think anybody else would want some? Like, I just, I don't know where Eris's mind frame her thinking, but obviously Eris has a bad track record, right? Because um, her daughter's father was, a, he scammed her. Had two other women pregnant. The man was trying to find a way to stay in this country. 
by having multiple children and it didn't work. They deported his behind. But we're going to send up a prayer for Eris's daughter. That's all we're going to do is going to send up a prayer for little mama because I don't think her mama is using the brain that the good Lord provided her with. But that's all I got for this episode, you guys. I want you guys to get down in the comment section, subscribe to the channel, turn your post notifications on, and share the video. You guys, until the next time, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Be blessed. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.